Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you want your daily dose of Reddit stories that aren't text to speech, then now's the time to subscribe and click on notifications. In our first story, we learn the lesson that even when you have the cash in hand, you can't trust a Choosing Beggar. Let's jump right in. Let me set the scene for this little circus that just unfolded today and last night. I'm selling my car to pay for school. It's a rather niche car and has a dedicated following, so generally 99% of the people looking to buy it know exactly what it is, how much they go for, etc. This car caters to a group, not just an everyday buyer, so most of the stuff like market value, etc. is all common knowledge here. I put an ad up for it on my listing site of choice. It is the cheapest one listed, and while not the best one listed condition-wise, it's nowhere near bad shape at all, but it does have some minor imperfections that I believe most of the same model would have for its age. I'm sure those of you that have sold cars before will know that most times when you sell a car, you get the low ballers and choosing beggars. That's why this sub exists, right? Some of the lines I've received so far with this ad. You listed at X price. They waste zero time with pleasantries, which may be a good thing depending on how you look at it, and just message nothing but a number less than half of what you are asking. Sorry, can't go that low. Offering significantly less than what I'm asking is insulting, especially when they know good and well what this car is worth and that I'm selling it cheaper than all of the other ones listed due to having to pay for school. I'm a buyer at X. The price is 33% less than the asking price. We are talking thousands of dollars here. Well, man, I'm not a seller at X, sorry. Will you trade for a 95 Mustang? I said no trades, so no, and that isn't even worth remotely what my car is. Or my personal favorite, all I can afford is X and I live hours away. You'll have to meet me closer to my asking price, sorry, your location isn't my problem. Of course, I didn't reply back with any of what I mentioned above. I try to keep it civil, even though in my ad it clearly, clearly, clearly states no trades and that low ballers will be ignored. This isn't hidden or omitted, it's right there in the ad in its own paragraph for all to see. But enough of that, let's get to why you are reading this, shall we? I get a message not long after listing, maybe two days, from a person, let's call him Choosing Beggar Window Shopper, because I'm not sure at this point after all that transpired that he really had any intentions of paying for the car at all under the terms we agreed on. I think he was expecting me to cave because of circumstances I'll list below. Anyway, Choosing Beggar messages me and offers me almost 20% less than my offering price. Again, keep in mind this is thousands of dollars here. The car has verifiable records, etc. I tell him, no, sorry, at this time I can't, but if I really come down to needing the money for school by the deadline and haven't found a buyer yet, I'll keep him in mind. So about four days pass, you get the typical lowballers, some serious sounding buyers that want to come and see it. Generally, I filter out the ones that aren't serious by saying I'm not showing the car unless you have cash or payment in hand. That usually stops all of the joy riders or people that don't have money. No offense to the people that appreciate the car for what it is, but I have to pay for school here. Don't waste my time by arranging a meeting when you have no intention or means of buying it. I figure it's the holidays and it's a special car, so I'm not expecting an instant sale. I message Choosing Beggar back and say, okay, if you are legitimately serious, we can talk. I can still pay my school with what he was offering, even though it was again a conscious lowball. Choosing Beggar tells me he lives two states away and has to figure out a way there. He knows my location from the ad. He asks me to drive it down there for a few hundred bucks more. I tell him no because I would have no way back and all of my friends are out of town. I mention there is an airport right near me though he could fly into. Choosing Beggar eventually decides to rent a car. Okay, great. He says he will leave Sunday. Well, Sunday rolls around, he texts me when I'm asleep and says he wants to talk to me on the phone before he drives that far. I'm assuming to make sure I'm legitimate. 
Okay, fine, I'll humor him here. I still don't understand the entire direction of the conversation. He mentioned how much he wanted this type of car and for how long. How he's going to leave super early Monday morning. Okay, fine. His plan is he leaves Monday morning, he gets here in time before the banks close, we complete the transaction, and that's it. So I send him my address via text, like he asks. Well, I expected to hear from him at some point during the day, like him calling to confirm we were still okay, or that he picked up his rental car and was on the way. Nope, nothing. I thought he had backed out without saying anything at this point. I get a call around the time he should have been arriving. He said he's a few hours out from city name, apparently his destination, which isn't the city my house is located in at all. It's near where I listed the ad at because I am at school normally, but hours away from my house. I sent him my address last night where I am and where the car is, which clearly listed my city. It was the full address. I have no idea how this guy would have just put the wrong city in the GPS without so much as a street or address in it and just start driving. I tell him that's not where I am or where the car is and that he should check the address that I sent him last night. So Choosing Beggar says he will be getting there closer to when the banks close now. At this point I'm somewhat annoyed, but I bite my tongue. Choosing Beggar mentions getting himself a hotel for the night when he gets in and looks at the car. Fast forward to when he is supposed to get here, still not here yet. I message him and ask if I can just show the car tomorrow because the banks are already closed and I'm trying to go to dinner with my roommate. I asked Choosing Beggar many times before this if he was indeed coming at X date and time to make sure I had my schedule clear. He calls me and says he really wants to see it tonight because he drove all this way, but it's up to me. Okay, whatever. I agree to meet him when he gets into town and not go to dinner with my roommate. He mentions wanting to meet at a police station. Okay, fine. I tell him to just Google the address of the police department in XY City. He says he is X amount of time away. So I get ready and leave. Choosing Beggar texts and mentions he's there in the back parking lot. I'm waiting to turn in and it just occurred to me, this place doesn't have a back parking lot to my knowledge. So I call him and say, where is the parking lot you are in? I'm in front of XY City Police Department about to turn in. Oh, I'm at XYZ City Police Department. At this point, I'm even more annoyed because I sent him the City Police Department over text like I did my home address and this guy has gone zero for two for following directions. He had both pieces of information in text form and managed to screw up both. So I put in XYZ City Police Department into my GPS. I know it's only 20 minutes away, but it's in the opposite direction. So I have to go back the way I came and past my house. I mention I'll be there in 20 minutes approximately. I pull into the police station parking lot at around 6 p.m. It's obviously already dark, but this place is very well lit. That's a plus. I met Choosing Beggar. He looks at the car for about 20 minutes, is in love with it, keeps saying, I want your car, and random variations thereof. I take Choosing Beggar on a test drive for several miles. When we pull back into the police station parking lot, Choosing Beggar says he likes it. Then he says he has to return his rental car by 8.30 a.m. or else he will get charged another day and that the hotel charged him a deposit that they didn't tell him about ahead of time. I'm not trying to sound inconsiderate here, but how is that my problem? What this really means is that he wants me to pick him up from the rental car agency. This guy doesn't seem to know how to plan anything. I agree to meet him there at 8.30 a.m. Fast forward to today. Choosing Beggar messages me at 8 o'clock, not 8.30. He got there early, so I rush to leave to go pick him up. I notice he isn't carrying any bags, luggage, anything. Maybe Choosing Beggar likes to travel light, to each their own. I ask if he needs to go back to his hotel and grab anything. He says he hasn't checked out yet. Seems weird to me, but okay. We go to his bank, and while we are waiting for it to open, he starts nitpicking about the vehicle. Tiny things, like how part of the paint looks like it's been repainted. It has, and it's common knowledge that this year's model had poor painting from the factory. In fact, many buyer's guides say not to disqualify the car as a potential purchase 
due to a paint job. Choosing Beggar says he still wants to buy it. As we are walking into the bank, I mean literally into the bank, he makes up some story about how the hotel charged him twice and now he doesn't have all the money. He's short like 80 bucks. Apparently, not only did Choosing Beggar get charged a deposit from the rental company yesterday that he didn't know about, he got charged an extra night at the hotel as well. Strange, I've stayed at hotels before and they never charge up front like that unless you book multiple nights. So I'm annoyed, but I'm like, okay, fine, just give it to me later. He mentions borrowing money from his sister for gas, I think. Irrelevant, I guess. Choosing Beggar starts talking to the banking staff trying to get those supposed refunds put back on his card right away. I don't know what rock Choosing Beggar lives under, that's not how refunds work. Anyone with a debit card should know this, which leads me to believe that this was a facade all along. Choosing Beggar refuses to call the bank's customer service, which is what the teller told him to do. Again, part of why I think he wasn't serious. Choosing Beggar then spends all that time withdrawing thousands in cash, making the teller count it and package it up. We begin to walk out. He hands me the envelope full of money. He starts looking at the car again and complaining about the same things he did before. But again, he agrees to buy it, so we walk back inside to get the title notarized. The bank staff said, since I'm selling, we have to use my bank as a notary, which is fine. It's across the street. I'm assuming he's thinking since I'm holding this envelope full of thousands of dollars that I won't turn away a potential sale right in front of me. Choosing Beggar wants a bill of sale, so the tellers mention there's a Staples across the street where we can print one out. Okay, we drive across the street to a Staples. He says he's going to stay outside. I start thinking something is definitely going on. I'm beginning to doubt this guy's legitimacy at this point. I go inside Staples and pay five bucks to print out two pieces of paper. Choosing Beggar comes in as I'm doing it and says he's changed his mind. Choosing Beggar says he wants to have a mechanic look it over and he wants to look into it more. He says he was worried about it being in an accident, despite the clean title, a Carfax report, and my suggestion to call the vehicle manufacturer and provide the VIN to verify. The car showed no signs of being in an accident, and it hasn't been. I think at this point the guy was looking for a way out because he either figured I was going to cave and lower the price because of all of these unforeseen fees he suddenly had to pay, or maybe the fact that his bank account now had less than a dollar in it based on what I heard the teller say. Now I drive him back to his bank so he can redeposit his money. He takes a picture of the VIN plate and of the VIN on the title, but I've lost any belief I had that this guy was credible, so I'm like, whatever, fine. Then Choosing Beggar says he will walk back to the rental car place. I offer to take him because even though I now think he wasn't serious to begin with, I'm not going to just make someone walk on the street, even if you do try to pull one by me. Choosing Beggar declines, saying, I've wasted enough of your time already. It's not my fault you didn't have enough money. You knew well ahead of time how much this was going to cost. It's not my problem, but he sure did make it one. Just because you spend money on a rental car or hotel and have these mysterious fees crop up out of nowhere, that isn't my problem. Go kick rocks. This has been John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.